Hi Year 12, Miss Frey Frey here, all the way from Qatar. So as requested, here is a video about your exam for international trade. So I hope it's helpful. Any questions, um, send me a message and I'll try and help you. But firstly, hope you're all well and I miss you all. So let's look at international trade. So you should be fairly familiar with all of these concepts. We did go over them before I left. But anyway, let's go through and have a look. So firstly, I hope you're all well. And just remember, positive mind, positive vibes. You can do it. Um, you've all worked so hard this year. Just dig deep and get it done. So to prepare, let's look at exactly what we were looking at in the first place, which we call our achievement objectives. So you need to analyze trade using economic concepts and models. Okay, so concepts are like the theory aspects that we've been learning. Models are like the graphs. So we learned lots of different models. For example, this one includes the two country model with our supply and demand curves. So, which means you can do all of the following. Provide, providing an explanation of causes of changes in international trade using models. So let's just break that down. Causes, what causes trade to change? Okay, so trade means one country is uh, importing or exporting goods or services with another. So what is going to change the, that trade? So some things that do cause changes of trade could include quotas, which are limits on trade, tariffs, which is like a tax on trade. All right, so those are your causes. There's a lot more. And then your changes of the trading between countries. And then we just show this through the models, such as the two country model graph. So I know that sounds confusing, but just break it down into simple terms. Secondly, you need to be able to provide an explanation of the impacts of changes in trade on various groups. So what this means is that there, when trade changes, so let's say, for example, New Zealand cannot export its meat anymore to Qatar. So therefore, what's the impact of that? on people in New Zealand. So what's the impact on households in New Zealand? What's the impact of the farmers back in New Zealand? What's the impact for the government back in New Zealand? So you have to think about it as what's moving back and forth between the world and then what's the impact back in New Zealand? That is what our second objective is. And then you'll need to also identify, define and describe inflation concepts. So inflation is an awesome term that we should all know by now, but what it means, all the prices of everything is going up, okay? So the price of not just this coffee, but the price of everything has gone up, which means the value of our dollar, the value of the money can no longer buy the same amount of things. You need more money to buy the same thing, inflation. The technical term, the increase in the price level of all goods and services. So for grades wise, your for a merit grade, your explanations are detailed. For excellence, you need to compare and contrast the different events and situations to analyze how they cause a change. So compare and contrast means that we are looking at two different scenarios, all right? So one scenario, I don't know, could be that, um, we'll look at a, we'll look at an example later, but you're comparing and contrasting. So you're looking at the impact between two different set scenarios and then what scenario is gonna do what on the different groups back in New Zealand, linking in, in inflation. So also integrate the changes of your model into your answer. So remember, no matter what change you do on your graph, for example, if you're moving the supply curve out to the right, which is an increase in supply, you would write that 
in your written answer. Okay, so you would write due to supply increasing and then in brackets S to S1 as seen on graph 1, we can conclude that XYZ. So you need to be able to integrate your model your into your answers. So a good little trick is look at all your written answers. Does your written answer include every single letter and number and line and label that you have done that you've made the changes to in your graph? So include everything. PL for price level, D for demand, quantity has changed. Okay, so that's where those excellent grades are going to come in. For the actual concepts that you need to revise, so content, aka the list what you need to revise, um, we could break it down into the following. So the concepts, uh, New Zealand's major trading partners and major imports and exports. All right, so trading partners, you should definitely know this by now. Who does New Zealand trade with the most? What countries do we do trade with the most? And then what imports? Do we buy in? So imports are products coming in to New Zealand and then exports, products leaving New Zealand. So which countries and then which products? Okay, so two different groups there. We also look at the current account. So this is about the balance of goods and services. So you'll focus on this. So focus on the balance of goods and services but have an overview of the rest of the current account and the balance of payments generally. Um, so there's a few different formulas within the balance of goods and services. So it's essentially just figuring out, have we sent more products overseas than we've received and looking at that equation. So go back to your notes. You should have these written down already. The price taker model. This was our first model that we looked at. So it's called a one country model. It just looks like a supply and demand graph, but we use it for trade. So it shows, we need to know how to show the impact of tariffs being removed and added. All right, so go back, look at a tariff. What is a tariff going to do to that supply and demand curve? And show the country importing and exporting. All right, so remember your X is your exporting. You need to know how to show that on a graph, label it, and as well as importing. Okay, so if the price was high, if the world price was high, then what New Zealand's gonna receive, we are going to sell our products overseas, right? Because we are earning more. If the world price was lower, we're gonna buy that in because it's cheaper. Okay, so the key idea there is that New Zealand is a price taker and we use the world supply, um, which is PW, world price, sorry, and then the world supply, SW. Then other model, two country model for trade. So this is looking at two different countries, which country exports, which country imports, um, and we look at one product in particular. So before I left, we did lots of these, those big A3 laminate, laminated sheets, and there's lots of examples. Go back and find those. Hopefully they're still in the classroom. Um, so I think we did it for like rice and clothing. So you want to find the price for trade and the level of exports and imports. And then remember when you're drawing your price line, it goes across both graphs. So the key idea is that one country's shortage is the other country's surplus, right? So for example, um, New Zealand has a surplus of meat in Qatar. We don't have a lot of farms here, so we import the meat from New Zealand to cover that shortage. Um, and also use the supply and demand model looking at the New Zealand dollar and different exchange rates. So know also on this point here, know how to convert exchange rates. So one Qatari real is 42 New Zealand cents, okay, and vice versa. Know how to do that. So the exam itself will have three questions, most likely, and a part A and a part B. 
Um, I strongly, strongly advise you to attempt all parts to every single question um, because remember the marks all add up and you need to get all the marks you possibly can if you're going for those higher grades, which you all should be because I know you're more than capable. So each question should be around eight marks. Eight times three is 24. Um, and the grade boundaries achieved is um, around eight. Merit over 14, excellence over 19. So really try to elaborate your answers on every single question possible. Look exactly at the title of what the question says. That's hinting to you what they want you to talk about. Don't go off on big tangents about other concepts. If, for example, the question is about New Zealand is a price taker. So it might be in a different order, but um, essentially you have a question about the supply and demand of the New Zealand dollar to events and situations that will cause an appreciation, so dollar going up, or a depreciation, dollar going down. Possibly linked to the impacts on other groups or the balance of trade, the current account. Okay, so I think from memory there was a diagram uh, in the in your workbook and it had a flow diagram of if this happens, so if the dollar depreciates, then this happens, then this happens, and it will have this impact on the balance of trade. So do two different tree diagrams for each of those. So remember, you're going to have to memorize that for an appreciation of the dollar and a depreciation of the dollar. There might be a question. Oh, and just going back to that, you always want to conclude with what's the impact of that on the current account. So a good little um, linking phrase is remembering a BLT, because of this, all right, so B, think of a B, and then an L, so BL, L stands for this leads to, so because of this, this leads to, and then T, therefore, or as a result, all right, so use those chains, we call those chains of reasoning, you want to link your things together and come to the conclusion of what because of this, then this, then what's going to happen. Okay, that's what they're looking for. And that's showing your deeper transfer of knowledge as well. Oops, going back to the other one. Uh, there, will be a, there will be a question on the basis for trade between two countries using the two country supply and demand model. Okay, so the two country model, you've just got two supply and demand curves next to each other. Um, you have a good or a service be given, sorry, a good be given to you. One country will be the exporter, one country will be the importer. So you'll figure that out on your graph and then you'll need to link it back to the impact on consumers and producers. So um, if we think of an example, let's say that we've got two countries, New Zealand and Qatar. New Zealand is exporting their surplus of meat over to Qatar. So you've got your two graphs. You're going to identify on this graph for New Zealand that they are the exporters. So you put an X, a label it, right? Then on your graph for Qatar, they're going to be the importers. So you label the amount that they're importing. So that will show you that New Zealand is giving over their surplus and Qatar is going to fill their shortage through imports. And then in your written answer, you're going to explain both of those things. Explain this graph, explain that graph, all your labels, all your lines. And then because of this, this leads to therefore. So you could look at for consumers, for example, consumers in Qatar now have access to meat that they didn't previously have. Um, the shortage has been filled. And consumers in New Zealand, for example, maybe the price has gone up because now New Zealand's um, price of meat increases because of that export. Whatever the graph is showing you, link it and think about it from your own perspective. Think about what is this situation going to have for you as a consumer and then think about it from a business perspective. Perhaps a producer is now going to supply more 
therefore their total revenue would increase because their supply has gone up. Okay, so think about it from the two different groups, but look at the question because it might only ask you to go into detail about one. Okay, let's go back. So the next thing you need to do is, uh, there'll be a question about the one country model. So just looking at one country and um, putting the tariff on or off. Okay, so look at what a tariff is, look at how it changes the graph, how it affects the quantity, the um, quantity demanded, quantity supplied, um, and it most likely will be on different goods to possibly compare which has the greatest impact, okay? So um, it might be a good of rice and then another good of wheat, for example, um, what's gonna be better, okay? So always come back to the, the end impact um, for trade, okay? And trade, at the end of the day, we trade because it's going to help the country's social welfare by increasing uh, the money coming in. If New Zealand didn't trade, New Zealand would only would have a surplus of meat, probably wouldn't supply as much meat, which means farmers wouldn't have as much business. So it lowers all of the money flowing around the economy. We also would have limited products because for example, we wouldn't have all the technology that we import. Um, so New Zealand only focuses, countries are only focused really on the resources that they can utilize. So remember, it goes back to the allocation of resources that a country has. Economics 101, scarcity, allocation of resources. And last slide, just remember that there is no such thing as luck. Luck is when preparation meets opportunity. So hope that's been helpful and let me know if you have any other questions. Um, and I miss you all, and I know that you will fly through it all. Keep up the faith, you're just about there. Bye.